coming up this week on the Course of Life podcast. The travel doesn't stop for me. We have a Wells Fargo championship thought or two, and I watched it all from Las Vegas in a very interesting venue. Plus, on the LPGA Tour, a very fun format on display for golf fans, which we should get used to. We're tuned into viewing at 35K feet and uh, stand-up comedy from one of the finest as well, too. Plus, this week's guest, we've got a twofer highlighting my awesome trip to New Mexico. First up, our friend Derek Gutierrez from Twin Warriors in Santa Ana, the host of the PGA Professional National Championship. And then we have JJ Colleen, a.k.a. the West Texas Driving Range Pro on Twitter. Really fun chat with a fun personality. And it's my Vegas food recap when we always end with food, all of it brought to you by our friends at the Live Take app. The Live Take app, like we say every week, is where we go to have our debates. We have a new debate there every single week. This past week, we had a fascinating discussion about alternate ways to play the game of golf. And there's a lot more where that came from. So check out the Live Take app because it's all about challenges and head-to-head debate where people on the internet can vote to decide who is right once and for all. Not your little echo chamber with your friends who all think you're wrong. Let's take it to the people and let's have a Live Take. Put your take out there on the Live Take app today. Again, challenge us. Check out our challenges. We've got a new one coming this week and every week. The Live Take app is yours when you want it for sports talk and sports debate. So download the Live Take app today. Interwebs and welcome to Course of Life. We are proud to be presented by our friends at Desert Fox Golf and the Live Take app. I'm Michael. He's Alex. And Alex, they were just a few hours up the road from me in Charlotte at the right. Well Fargo Championship at Quail Hollow, defending two-time defending champ, not two times in a row, but defending champ with two wins at the Wells Fargo. Max Holma, he did all right. He did maybe better in the broadcast booth than he did on the course, though he still had a top ten finish. But Wyndham Clark. Uh, great mm. with his first PGA Tour victory at 19 under par, holds off Xander Shoffley, and he does it after. I mean, really, arguably, maybe a he did all right in the you know front nine, but then he rallied to finish real strong, 68 in the closing day after losing the lead, and wins by four strokes clear of Xander Shoffley. Pretty impressive, impressive stuff. Impressive victory. It was because of the way it happened. Like you said, the front nine Sunday was that perfect moment where when a guy on the PGA Tour is going for his debut win, his fingers start to feel like lobster claws. And he starts sweating a little bit harder and he realizes what's right in front of him. It was a bit of an auspicious start. Bogey at the first, bunch of pars to settle. But then as he turned the corner of the back nine, everything seemed to become a lot more clearer for Wyndham Clark. And this is a guy that's put himself in contention a bunch, Mike. I think he's had like four or five top tens this season. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm not super surprised to see him finally get the win. He's a name we've known on tour for sure. And he's been a member for a few years now. Uh, so good to see him get the win. And uh, in a great spot too. Quail Hollow, you know, the Wells Fargo. That's probably in my, on my list, maybe a top 10 or 12 PGA Tour event to win for sure. I mean, $3.6 million in that winnings. Too. Yes. <laughs> Pretty impressive for sure. And, and you know, I, I do a certain extent, I feel for Xander Shoffley because you'd think that a 64 on moving day would be enough to get you in the lead, but it's not because Wyndham Clark put up a 63. Yeah. And, you know, Xander did everything right. This was just when the Clark said, no, I, I finally want a W on my on my uh, record here. And he's yeah, it's interesting. Shoffley lurking around leaderboards, but not lifting trophies as of recent. You know what I mean? He's got he's got a lot of things uh, to, to be happy about right now, but certainly not getting the uh, the Sunday win performance uh, like he has in recent years. So we'll look to see him probably contend soon here. Mm, maybe next mm, week. Who maybe knows? In, could, be, in, could be a thought at Oak Hill. We'll see. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's what I say. Two weeks, Rochester major championship you never know what's going to happen for a guy like xander um so uh and and i want to talk about your experience because you were in vegas this week just just returned back to your home base in austin and uh you got to watch some of the golf from the vegas superbook you sent me some pictures of the massive wall of screens how absurd is this 
I mean, how immersive was it to be there to watch the golf? <laughs> yeah, I was at the Westgate, and, st- and anyone who knows Vegas or they know sports books knows that the Westgate Superbook is like one of the meccas. It's one of the best, if ne- the be- if not the best and biggest uh, Superbook in Vegas, and wall to wall screens. Um, at least a, what 200 foot wide display probably there's a, a good array of just 10 gigantic monitors about 20 percent dedicated to the race book and the rest just every single sporting event going on mike there were moments when there were seven or eight mlb games going on in the evening and they had every single one of them on for you i mean it's a better's heaven and it was fun to be there and see the atmosphere and the unique part was watching the pga tour they they actually put a lot of golf on the main screens, Mike, you'd be surprised how much golf coverage was there. You could bet on all the tours. You could even bet on the PGA Tour champions. How about mm. that for a wide array of odds, huh? That's that's pretty. That'd be pretty good. I, mean, I was, bet. So, yeah. did, did anyone bet on uh, uh, Angel Jimenez uh, getting an ace? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Seriously, that would have been a nice play indeed. I didn't have the time to because of my stay, but it was cool looking at the head-to-head matchups at the Wells Fargo and, and watch Clark ascend up the leaderboard. I was watching Sahit Tagala during morning coverage. They were throwing the Golf Channel on there, PJ Tour Live on about a 10-foot by 10-foot wide screen. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take that more often. So definitely a unique sports watching experience. And, and just so you know, golf fans out there, yeah, you can even watch golf at the, at the sports book if you stay at the Westgate. Nice. Nice. The uh, LPGA Tour is still in action as we talk. We're once again recording early on a Sunday evening due to our own plans going on elsewhere. So a day early. Uh, it is the uh, the Hanwha Life Plus International Crown. International team golf in the middle of the year. This is why doesn't a PGA Tour have an event like this? I don't know. This is just fantastic. Everyone plays for their country and... Uh, Right now, as we talk, nothing decided. Uh, the USA in the consolation match is currently yeah. one match is over. They're currently losing to Sweden. They lost to Sweden in one, but they're leading in the other two matches. And then in the final match, Australia and Thailand, Thailand leading through all three matches right now. So it looks like they're probably going to hold on to this, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it's a cool format that I want to discuss because obviously this is ahead of its time when it comes to the LPGA. They're great at mixing up these alternate formats, and I wanted to highlight it. You know, the the Live Tour is doing a bit something similar with four-person teams, but it hasn't quite been internationalized and separated by country yet. It unofficially is in some parts. You you know, there's a couple teams on the Live Tour that are Latin American-centric and South African-centric, so you're seeing bits and pieces of that. But this is the full development of it right here. It's the idea that we could have mini Ryder Cup type of events in the middle of the golf season. And the PGA Tour has to look at this and and you wonder why this couldn't be a home run event. You know, imagine replacing a lower level tour event or a spot in the fall with an event like this where you could get four names from each of the greatest countries on the PGA Tour. Uh, It's definitely something that should be in the works in the coming years if it isn't already. Yeah, I, I would love to see this. Of course, we know that the Dell match play is gone. No, we don't know if match play in general is gone or if the if it's just that it's no longer in Austin. Right. This would be a great event to take its place as well. And look what they do. They mix it up where they have singles and two-on-two matches going at the mm-hmm. same time. I love that. I love, they're just like, yeah, screw it. We're just going to do a little mix. We're going to do a little buffet. We're going to give yeah. you a couple singles matches, and we're going to give you a doubles match right at the same time. So I, I appreciate the the ingenuity from the LPJ Tour, and it's good to see this, this event back on the calendar after a, a couple hiccups in recent years. All right, let's look ahead to the next week there in Texas for the AT&T Byron Nelson. Uh, KH Lee looking for a three-peat. I don't think we've had anyone recently be able to secure the three-peat when they've had the opportunity, though. No, we did the Max Homa conversation. We did the Victor mm-hmm. Hovland one and Mayakoba, I believe. And I think there's been another one recently, but it's been coming up a lot. This is an interesting week for, for betters and wagers out there because – you know, KH Lee is not necessarily at the top of people's minds when, when they think of elite golfers in the game, but yep. he's amassed two PGA Tour wins and they both happen at the same course at the same event. This event moved, as you know, it's gone all over the DFW. It moved to McKinney at TPC Craig Ranch for 2021 yep. and he's won both planes there, Mike. So he absolutely dominates this course, 25 under, 26 under in both of his wins. Uh, why, why won't he get it done? I don't know. It's the, basically that's the storyline of the week is are you betting into the three Pete or are you betting away from it? 
I mean, I don't know. Jordan Spieth finished one off the lead last year. Uh, he's a local boy. You know, he's there. Uh, so we'll see if he's he's returning to the field. The interesting thing is beyond KH Lee, you have another Korean who won the year before. So the Koreans have actually won the last three years. Soon Kang won in 2019. Good call. Yeah. So an interesting run there, um, and, and especially for KH Lee. So we're watching out for the three-peat. Scotty Scheffler, also a local, notably in the field. Um, so it should be a pretty good event. AT&T, Byron Nelson. Um, this is a birdie fest. Uh, so get this. don't get this confused with what you're going to see in the PGA Championship the week following. Uh, this is definitely a good opportunity to stretch the muscles, wide targets, open landing spots on the greens, lots of birdies to be had. So it should be a fun one in Dallas. All right, let's switch over to Tuned In, where we share what we're tuning into outside of the world of sports. I watched a new comedy special this week, Alex, from John Mulaney. You mm, know who John I Mulaney is? I've heard that name in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You haven't heard that name in a little bit because he was in rehab following an intervention for his excessive drug use, which he talks about in detail during the special called Baby wow. J out on Netflix. This is, uh, as, as a coworker of mine said about this special, John Mulaney seems the most genuine in this special. And Mulaney touches on it at one point saying, you know, I used to do comedy like whoop -a -dup -a -dup -a -dup all across the stage and I don't anymore. And I wonder why that is. So you kind of get the idea. He's going he's gonna to talk about his star-studded intervention. Interesting. Um, as well as his time in rehab and what led to his intervention and how he had $4,000 worth of drugs and $2,000 in cash on him during his intervention. And then uh, everything that happened after that as well. So really entertaining, really hilarious. Uh, you know, and I'm sure it was very cathartic for him to do a stand up routine in which he's talking about all the right. things that went wrong in his life during yeah. COVID. <laughs> so. I love the candid comedy too. That, that usually ends up being the best comedy. Yeah. And we can all take the moment to kind of laugh at his faltering in life because he's made it out the other end and, and we have to and we're there to be with him. So I kind of appreciate the nature of that. So Baby J, John Mulaney, interesting. Yeah, I, and I was wondering where he'd been. So thank you for clearing that up. There you go. Okay, there's some stories there. Love that. Cool. Uh, I'm tuned in to what we tune into on planes, Mike. As you know, I've mm. been on a lot. It's a busy travel schedule for me right now. Um, planes, uh, your thoughts on what you typically tune into. Uh, first question, do you take out a larger device or do you watch on your phone when you tune into something? Uh, well, recently, I haven't really had another portable device other than the phone to Just take phone. with me. Same. So yeah. it's a phone. Now, that said, I will sometimes try, try to take out an analog device like a book to read or a magazine to read while on the plane. Uh, or I just turn and look out the window. Good for you, man. I used yeah. to do that back in the day. Um, yeah. As far as phone, I, I'm leaning in towards the live TV stuff right now. I do watch some streaming series. American Airlines has a good set of streaming series out right now. Uh, but I've been watching just a lot of news, a lot of Sports Center. I'm caught up on everything. I know all the headlines because I've seen them all three times. Live TV at 35,000 feet. For some reason, I don't know why, it just feels like this little special treat that I'm not privy to and, and I appreciate mm. it. It's like a secret viewing. Um, and I'm watching a lot of New York newscast because American Airlines and a lot of the airlines only show the New York feed of networks that they show yeah. live. So I'm getting a lot of New York news. Mike, New York City, scary place, in case you didn't know. It is. It is. <laughs> a lot of bad stuff going on there. <laughs> do, you, do you remember, Alex, back in the day when uh, you were really excited when you saw the TVs hanging down from, from the uh, from the luggage compartments mm. overhead when you got on a plane and you were like, oh, I'm on a plane that might have TV. Yeah, Remember and they're going to show us something. That usually, they, yeah. Back in the day, they would just decide for you out there. Kid, listen, yeah. listen up, kiddos. They just told you what the movie was, and it was up to you whether you wanted to stick your headphones in the port and tune in or you didn't want to. It, it was it. That, there was one viewing option, or it was the window, just like you yeah. did. Yep. So, and they had in-flight magazines. I don't know if people know. You know, there's be magazines I mean, in, those in those pockets in front of you. These, those pockets yeah. are empty these days. It's just by the a way. bag and a menu. And you that's know what? It. It's funny you mention it. There, I didn't even see barf bags this past what? flight. I'll report back and, and let you know what I see this week. Okay. Okay. We'll see. All right. Let's get to uh, this week's first guest. Alex, last week we talked about your time when you spent again at the Hyatt Regency Tamaya. You went without me to this wonderful I New did. Mexico I resort. It. You went there for the PGA Professional National Championship. This is where PGA pros from across the country get together and play with an opportunity to go play in none other than the PGA 
Championship, which this Correct. year is an Oak, Oak Hill. Hill. That's right. 20 spots. And our friend Derek Gutierrez, who we met there, who was a great host for us when we had our visit, was once again another great host. And he was helping run the show there. So he's a busy guy, but it was cool to catch up with him. Uh, so here's a quick little excerpt of my conversation with uh, Derek Gutierrez. Course of Life podcast live from the PGA Professional Championship back at a very familiar site that I'm very glad to be back at and back with a familiar face as well, too. It's Derek Gutierrez joining us in the Course of Life. How are you, Derek? Good to have you back. You're just here last summer, right? I know, right? Yes, yeah, so yeah. it was last August that we were here. We did a really awesome trip where we highlighted everything that this property and the two courses right. that we're going to be seeing had to offer. And we were teasing this moment when we talked last summer about the things that were upcoming. Uh, not only the Women's Cup, which already right. took place, but this event as well. So how has uh, the whirlwind been the last wow, eight months? you know, it, it feels like you were just here a few weeks ago. Yeah, right? I know, and right? And we were building up to those two major events in the fall, the senior, well, the PGA Senior Professional Championship, and then, of course, the international event, the PGA Women's Cup. And so those came and went so fast. And then, you know, we head into winter, and and all of a sudden, here we are. Here it is, April, May, and we've got the, the PGA Professional Championship, yeah. which is an incredible event. You know, the top 312 PGA uh, women, men, and PGA uh, sorry, women and men PGA members from all over the country representing our 41 sections, and so just an exciting time to have them here. This is the best talent, as you know. The top 20, yes, will become the uh, Core Bridge uh, team of 20, top 20 that will go on to play in the PGA Championship. Heard of it, Rochester at Oak Hill. You've heard of that event, <laughs> right? In just a few weeks, and so uh, pretty cool to see that some of these members will go on and represent us in one of the four majors. This really has been exciting. a really cool run for the club. And I saw the special where you were profiled on the Golf Channel regarding the Women's Cup. And you guys have already seen adversity when hosting tournaments as well. Wow. Tell everyone the weather and the wildness of that week and how you guys got everything done. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you were here in a nice time of year, right? August, yes. But it's still yeah. pretty warm, no humidity. But, you know, as I promote our facilities, October, latter half of September, all of October is the time I tell people to come. Everything's lush. The trees are, are, are turning gold. And it's just a wonderful time of year to come out and visit. That said, um, over some of those days of competition, we had we had winter come out of nowhere. And we had extreme, you know, uh, Good flakes. precipitation and there was no high flakes winds in the <laughs> and hail and snow. And and people are like, where are we at here? I'm like, well. The full I, New Mexico experience. And then, of course, right? you have to give them, well, this is rare. This never happens, right? So, but nonetheless, they had mostly good weather. But I think the one day created some, I think you said adversity and, and created some challenging conditions. And I thought it uh, presented a pretty good test of golf. Now, it was very cool to see and document it on the Golf Channel as well yeah. and see your face promoting the event was really neat. So now we're turning the corner here to an event that I have seen on the Golf Channel and followed for years and decades yeah. because of its, its uniqueness and what it presents. Mm -hmm. First off, this opportunity. There's no opportunity in the world like this where there are 20 spots in a major championship right. on the line. Yep. Talk about the, the gravity of, of the event this week in hosting. So, you know, so for hosting, I think that our team, you know, we have 10, uh, nine PGA members at our two facilities. And so as part of the association, we're very uh, aware of what, what's next for these professionals to have, an, I mean, an opportunity at your doorstep or your feet to play in one of the four, four majors. How wow. often does that come along? Yeah. Right. And so there's some extreme pressure on all 312 participants. And I think while while hoisting that trophy and being our, you know, the medalist, the champion for the year is extremely important and, and just life changing. Being able to play in that major is going to be equally life changing. And so I think we all understand it. Uh, and every player here, of course, understands it. So, yeah, it's, it's great. And, and this was actually in your state last year over at Omni Barton Creek. It so, was. Yeah, yeah, it was at a very cool course in Barton Creek. And uh, now it's here at another course I'm very familiar with. That's right. um, so let's talk about the actual uh, club pros and the process for getting into mm -hmm. this tournament. Correct. You know, there's club pros all over the world. Mm -hmm. And there's probably people who work at golf courses all over right. the world who want to be a club pro and maybe sure. one day aspire to be in this. Right. What's the process for qualifying and getting to where these players are now? So to be for, so number one, you have to be a class A PG member to play in the qualifiers at the section level. Uh, we could get into a whole nother uh, deal. The pipeline to become a PGA member right. is is incredible. This is a, and I'm, I'm going to go off subject a little bit. To be a PGA member, you never work a day in your life. It, it, whatever career path you choose, right? It's an awesome way to go. But back to to uh, to get here, each of the 41 sections has a uh, section championship. And the more players in that event, the more spots you get. Okay. So some of the bigger sections have more spots, unlike Sun Country, where we may have had three spots to get in. So nonetheless, you have to go that route section level, and then you're into this one. So it's 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 one major event in your section to get to here. 
Very cool. Uh, are, are we seeing both courses on, on highlight today, in, this week in the event? Correct? Great question, yes. Yeah. So, so uh, how's, it, how's it working logistically for the players in 72 holes? So four rounds start on Sunday through Wednesday. Uh, we'll have uh, tape delay coverage on Sunday, then live coverage uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday on Golf Channel. We're very excited to show our facilities here on that. Uh, of course, Santa Ana Star Casino Hotel, Santa Ana Golf Club, Twin Warriors Golf Club. You're in the Hyatt Regency Tommy Resort and Spa right now. Tommy Adventures on the corner, all of our outlets excited to host. Yeah. But I think the first two days, uh, so all four days at Twin Warriors, first two days at Santa Ana. So each player will play round, one round at Santa Ana Golf Club. Okay, so you're going to get a mix, nice. 312, 312 players, and we'll cut to 90 in ties. And then after that day, going into the final round, we'll cut to 75 in ties. And so uh, both facilities used uh, for the week. Very cool. Let's talk about how this course um, presents and whatnot for our players. Uh, when I went out and got there, um, there's a lot of target golf and shot to shot opportunity, lots of important landing zones sure, and correct. vision lines, yeah. um, for anyone who's looking to come out here and have this similar golf experience on the heels of seeing the tournament. Right. Um, what can you tell them about the tests of both courses? So we've had, you know, professionals, they, the practice rounds, uh, officially started, um, this week. Uh, Wednesday through Saturday, yep. and then the term starts Sunday. But we've had players come in, in and out since last year, just trying to, you know, they could sneak away from work for a few days. And I like it. Advanced side the of scouting it, so. mission, just like the best yeah. in the world. Yeah. Right. So while we talk <laughs> about Santa, when they ask, I say Santa Ana's defense is its greens. They're shorter in length, but the greens have a ton more undulation. And uh, when they get a little dry and the wind picks up, they can be hard to keep a ball on the green. So, but you come here and it's, and you played it and the, the teeth here, it's, it's length. It's a long golf course. And I said it in an article in PJ Magazine. Sometimes you can play 18 holes and I'm like, why is the wind in my face on every hole? It just <laughs> feels that way. And then you add the length. So, you know, I think it's key to you talked about sight lines and, and to know those and, and know your, know your, know your distances. You know, sometimes yeah. it's hit it to 150 and then go from there. Cause you know, 150 is my number. Right. And so you want to play to that, to that strength, but you definitely want to keep it out of the, the rust's not too tall this year. Cause we're just coming out of winter. But I can tell you, you want to keep it out of that native terrain because you hit it out there. Yeah, you hope to find it. And if you do find it, sometimes it's it's unplayable. So got to keep in the green stuff and and uh, and hope for the best. Love it. Awesome. Again, it's Derek Coudieres here uh, repping the PGA District 12. He heads it up and he's running the show here and everything going on with Hyatt Regency and the two golf courses. It's great being back here for the event. Uh, let's do a quick little fun uh, this or that for you. Just ga gauge you going into the week here. Some real quick questions. Okay. Um, this week, would we rather see a hole in one or an albatross out there in tournament play? Would be more fun for you. Well, albatrosses are pretty rare and cool. The ace is always makes the highlight reels. You want that? Da -da 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 -da. That's right. right. You got it. That's your opportunity. You could. So. You get a top for, 10 play this week. Oh, for the ace, <laughs> especially in a championship. And this is an interesting one because I've, I've played here at all parts of the day. Um, I'm going to ask you personally, sunrise or sunset golf? What do you like in these days more? I'm a morning person. I'm a morning person. I'm up at 430 every morning. And to be a dew sweeper out there at 7 a.m. is, is and, and here at Twin Warriors. Nothing like it here on the Pueblo Santana. The cultural sites, the the just the nature of the of the uh, the location is unbelievable. So sunrise at Twin Warriors every nice. time. Nice. And then the other funny golf question we've been asking a lot recently, which has caused a, lo a lot of debate, is if you're going to play 18 holes, are you righty or lefty? You're I'm right-handed. Right yeah. All right. Would you play 18 holes? Where, how would you score lower, playing all 18 holes lefty, or all 18 holes righty but with one hand? 18 holes righty. 18 holes righty, one hand. Yep, yep. Okay, you answered that quickly. I, li <laughs> yeah. I like the confidence there. I like that. Yeah, 18 holes righty for sure. <laughs> nice. And uh, 19th hole question: uh, Hot dog or protein bar at the turn these hot days? Hot dog with what's on it? Hatch green chili, grilled onions, and a little bit of mustard, spicy mustard if they have it. Thank you for shouting out the green chili. Yeah. I'm going to get some of that this weekend. Yeah. Looking forward to the rest of my stay. Again, it's Derek Gutierrez back on the course of life. And uh, best of luck with everything this week and moving forward for the property. Thanks for yeah. being here. Thanks for supporting us. And uh, look, I love the podcast. I love everything you're doing. You guys are killing it. Thank you, man. Love having yeah. you on. Awesome. Thanks. We're back. Great chat there with Derek. Great to see that, that event went off without a hitch, and they yes. got lucky with good weather. Following what happened at the 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 women's event in the fall, I know, yeah, with snow, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of casual flurries as you're golfing with the desert mountains in the background. Um, yeah, so the, they had a much nicer forecast, and it was a fantastic week out there. And and thanks to Derek and all the PGA pros and staff that were just awesome hosts all week. Made some really great contacts out there, and and they put it all together. A golf tournament with 312 players, Mike. Not easy to put together on two courses, but they, it went off without a hitch, like you mentioned. 
indeed. And one of those 312 PGA pros uh, is is our next guest. Yes. We want to talk to uh, to to one who was there, who who wanted to play in this national championship, and he's known for being on Twitter more than anything else, maybe. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Uh, people might know the West Texas driving range pro. I'm not talking about Roy McAvoy at 10 cup. I'm mm. talking about the, the West Texas driving range pro on Twitter known as JJ Colleen. He's played some pro t- uh, time on the tour, uh, PGA and corn Ferry. Uh, he's a PGA pro now working on a golf course of his own. He was in the field and qualified as well. We have an awesome conversation coming your way with the West Texas driving range pro JJ Colleen. We'll get to that conversation in just a second. But first, let's talk about our good friends at Desert Fox. We've talked about them all the time. I feel like we're beating, you know, uh, something over the head with a stick here because we keep telling you all about their amazing phone caddy, about their swing aid tumbler, about all these great products you can get, how you can save 10% with our promo code Course of Life at their website on anything, anything. And because we've been such good friends with them for so long, they've decided to extend an additional discount to those of you that are holding large golf outings, a corporate golf outing, a nonprofit outing, something like that. you got to give some swag away to these players that are going to be there. And why not give them a Desert Fox phone caddy? You can get a personalized with a logo on there. So you can get your logo on there so they always know it's there. It's on their cart. It's ready to go. You know they're all going to be in carts because that's how it works in these events. You can have one already on the cart ready to go for them. Wouldn't that be great? Let them know they got that swag right there for them. And if you spend over $100, I mean, really, you're going to because there's probably going to be more than 100 people there. And you know these things aren't a dollar each. They're, they're a good price, but they're not a dollar each. Desert Fox will give you $100 back. Just for buying over 100 golf caddies. It's fantastic. And all you got to do is reach out to us on social media, COL Podcast or Course of Life Alex. Let us know what you're doing. We'll get you in touch with the people in charge and they will get you going. You can check out everything they got at DesertFoxGolf.com. Fantastic assortment. Use our promo code Course of Life as well. Save 10%. And don't forget to reach out to us on Instagram and let us know you're ready to go. Next up on the tee, love having unique personalities from the world of golf on the show. And this one I've been following on social media for a bit. He's got a great podcast of his own and a lot of great playing stories that he shares on the For the People podcast. And he's on site where I am for the PGA Professional National Championship. It's JJ Colleen joining the Course of Life. JJ, how you doing today? Yeah, great. Thanks for having me on here. Absolutely, man. So a lot of people know you by a couple of different titles, but uh, West Texas Driving Range Pro is what a lot of people might know you from on your Twitter handle. Um, Mimicking, obviously, a little bit of the Rory McAvoy Tin Cup lifestyle, but uh, tell me your West Texas kind of background and and the origin of that nickname itself for you. Yeah, for sure. So I I live in uh, I live in Lubbock, Texas, which is, you know, West West Texas. Oh, yeah. It's huge. I mean, People think they live in West Texas if they're just west of Dallas. So we'll just say West Texas is, is huge. But um, I live in I live in Lubbock, and uh, I, I owned a, a business called Four Golf. We ended up selling during uh, COVID to a group. But so I worked at a driving range, man. West Texas Driving Range Pro. It was, it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty true. Indeed, man. Yeah. I mean, what 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 uh, what what do you take away from that movie specifically? That's a golf classic for a lot of fans of the game. Um, what are your favorite Roy McAvoy moments that maybe you think you really do mimic the most in really embodying the West Texas driving range pro lifestyle? Yeah, I don't know. Like his his therapist is way hotter than my therapist. So that's mm, the okay. biggest difference I would say like right away. Cause yeah, Renee Russo is pretty good. Um, but that's it. Just both train wrecks with therapists. So that's what I would compare us to. The end of that movie, I did not like, man, when he rinsed about 12 balls into the pond there. Um, not an ideal scenario. But, yeah, dude, I think West Texas is pretty simple lifestyle. Um, just kind of, dude lives in a Winnebago. His spa is in his caddy is, is, is his buddy. And they just, I don't know, they have a little inflatable pool that they hang out, out in and drink some beers and hit some golf shots on the range. Sounds like a pretty good life, really. It's a basic lifestyle if you can if you can situ- situate your, yourself accordingly. And yeah, 12 balls in the water, uh, definitely the opposite of nails, as I would say. I know you love saying nails. That's yeah. the opposite of nails, right? 
anti anti nails scenario right there. I mean, that was never say die stuff, but yeah, that was that was a tough scene. <laughs> awesome. I love following on, on social, and one of the cool things that we like to see is a very candid update and status of your game, uh, down to you working in the backyard on your game. Um, but just tell everyone, you know, how are things right now? I know you got kind of a busy playing schedule ahead for you playing wise, but but what's the status of your game right now? Uh, I don't know. To be determined, I guess. Yeah. I usually get my game going in the summer, like right after all the big events. Oh, okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> but I don't know, man. It should be good. I had a pretty good year playing our section stuff and, and was fortunate enough to get a spot into the Byron Nelson by winning our section championship for the Northern Texas PGA. So got that coming up. Uh, this is obviously a huge one, the biggest, you know, club pro event of the year um, with a chance to play in the PGA championship, which is, which is cool. But we're also building a golf course right now. So like crazy, crazy busy, man, trying to organize all the infrastructure and operational things like that in order to get us open here in a couple months. Indeed. Let's get into that real quick. Um, this is going to run that Byron Nelson week when you're in the field. Excited to see you play there. Um, but let's talk yeah. about Red Feather Golf Club. This is fascinating to see for me because, you know, I just know you as being JJ Clean, golfer and personality. But then all of a sudden I see that you're you're deeply tied and invested in this brand new course that's like at dirt level. And it's been fascinating to see uh, the transition that the course has been making um but but how did that all come about for you yeah so i mean you know one of my buddies had uh this idea that he wanted to start a golf course in uh lubbock texas they're they're really in need of a course about three hundred fifty thousand people uh country club scene there's not a whole lot of action um you know they have a good public course things like that and the game of golf has obviously exploded here since covid and you know there's with a decent sized town there just weren't a lot of options especially location wise so um, entrepreneur, my buddy Brad Ralston's his name. He wanted to to start a club, and um, yeah, it's been a it's been a journey, man. I've been on all sides of the golf business, from playing professionally to teaching to owning golf entertainment, knowing knowing a lot of that stuff, being friends with all the you know top golf guys, all those you know all those guys when we're doing technology, technology development with big shots, um, and then uh, yeah, now I'm in the golf course building business i'm not the one building it but i'm hmm. running the uh, operations well, so, what's the part that's most action what's the part that, that's most daunting to you, for you or the part that you underappreciated the most before you actually got to constructing and building a golf course uh the m- mother nature's undefeated pretty much yeah like i mean when you're building something like you're reliant on you know not only not only rain and things like that but there's wind and dust and freezing weather and sometimes droughts and all these other things. So uh, to build a golf course during that time was a little trying. However, um, really good team building stuff there. And um, man, we should be should be open probably here in a, in a couple months. We had 14 holes done last fall. Okay. And uh, the the temperature in Lubbock, kind of like Albuquerque, it's, it's higher elevation, so it takes a minute for it to warm up. Um, and before you lay sod or anything like that on a golf course, you have to, uh, you gotta have temperatures reach a certain, certain point. So yeah, we're, we've got a few, a uh, few greens to, to finish growing in and then sod the rest of the course and we should be dialed here shortly. That's exciting. So what is the, what does the opening look like for a course like that? You, you got a day, you got a party day planned or what's what, there's gotta be some festivities yeah, yeah. associated with this, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, the difference between a golf course and like a regular business is like, regular business it's hard opening a business for sure um because we did that with the range huge top golf type type entertainment thing and yeah but with with that you can kind of time it a month out once you get all your permits and things like this this has way more moving parts with literally watching grass grow so it's kind of like hey we're probably going to be open during this time frame we're going to let you know like two days before that it's going right. down so um and then once it's open it's open type type deal but yeah we'll have a party for sure i mean once uh, dang, this thing's taken, it's gotten expensive to build, but but the end product is going to be phenomenal. Exciting, man. Again, it's JJ Clean joining us. You know him as the West Texas Driving Range Pro. Great personality in the golf world and on social. Um, let's get to some of your content as well, too, before we talk about the For the yeah, People sure. podcast. Uh, because the, the best content that you do is just straight up you hitting balls against your net in the backyard. We've, we've had some yeah, interesting man. moments. We're get, we get some swing checks. You give us your candid thoughts. And we have the occasional misfire where the ball can go absolutely anywhere. Uh, what, what's your favorite part uh, about the, the zaniness of of working on your game in the backyard these days? Yeah, I mean, you know, the thing, you're pretty confident hitting into a net because the ball's only going like a few feet. So if it's duck hooking or slicing or whatever, in your head, you just think that it's this great shot. 
even though we all know that anything can go down uh, once you get onto a golf course you yeah. see it but I don't know man people like everybody has a different problem kind of like with their life with their golf swing everybody has a different problem right and there's like a certain way to fix things that might relate to someone and might not and there's 10 things you can tell them that might work you know for 10 different people but it's all the same thing really at the end of the day you're trying to teach and it's fun like trying to help people do that but then some people just like the the chaos that ensues like yeah i hit a ball through the net through my fence off my neighbor's house back <laughs> off my roof into the pool and i just looked the other day on instagram it had like people are still commenting on it and it was like a couple weeks ago and there's like 3.9 million views or something like that and i was like jeez man some people just love watching uh, train wrecks, I guess. Oh, yeah. Catast- catastrophe sells on social for sure. And that was the one I was thinking yeah, of because yeah. I had the similar experience to you. It was early COVID. I just put the net in the backyard, but I hit a hole through it. And then all of a sudden, one seven iron just magically went through that one hole in netting. That ball might still be flying, JJ. But the bottom line is <laughs> I got a backup net. So now I'm double netted in the backyard. and I haven't had the yeah. issue since. So you, so you might have to do something similar there. Yeah, extra protection, man. I mean, yeah, mine's sitting outside all the time. Lubbock has all sorts of weather and all sorts of, you know, the net gets, I'm sure it gets, you know, whatever you want to call it, sunburned, bleached, mm, yeah. whatever rope, whatever happens to rope sitting outside, it's cold, hot, all that. Good product. Everyone, I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the product. It's probably the best net you can buy, the net return. However, like, it's, you know, it only can handle so many, so many piss missiles into the uh, net before it absolutely just uh, caves in, man. <laughs> Indeed, fun to follow along. All right, let's let's talk a little podcasting, which we're we're in that space big time, and and you've got a fantastic uh, podcast in for the people. It's yourself and, and a pro who people will definitely remember by the name of John Peterson, aka PD. Um, what what's the yeah. background in your relationship? I'm sure you guys must have originally connected at a tournament a long while ago, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm a I'm a little bit older than him, so we didn't compete against each other in college. But I lived in Fort Worth for a long time when I was playing professionally, and he's he's a Fort Worth guy. And but we both played on the PGA Tour, corn, I mean, all the tours, Corn Ferry Tour for a long time. So I mean, we know each other from there. Like you see everybody every week for thirty something weeks a year. Um, and then whatever, we have kind of similar personalities. He's a little he's he's he he's a little. Uh, a little more extreme i think he just goes in and just uh you know guns a blazing type deal and i I like to analyze the situation for at least three seconds before i do that three okay you know that's yeah that's just that's basically the chemistry component but (laughs) between him and me especially him with a lot of these younger guys like he's just boys with everybody i mean whether they're on teachers pga tour live or if i know the guys from p you know pga tour professional golf live golf whatever some teacher or somebody we see on social media, like we're just, we, we kind of want people that are, you know, not, not quite as robotic or whatever, nothing against, nothing against, you know, being polished and only caring about golf. That's your job. But we try to get people on there that like to have a good time, but also are really good players. Absolutely, man. You know, this game is so wide ranging and there's so many people from all walks of life to play the game. You, you, you got to keep it loose and, 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 you know, not just talk about your seven iron yards for 45 minutes. So I, yeah. I appreciate what you guys are doing for the content game in the golf space. Let's talk about some current events because you guys touch on them very nicely between the two of you. And you had a great guest in Taylor Gooch for some really good live tour perspective because obviously the live versus the PGA tour is all the debate in the world of golf. But Taylor brought up sure. some really interesting points with you guys. And, and le- I'd like like you to kind of expound on his ideas to potentially mold the tours together and, and allow players from one tour to play on the other in special circumstances and vice versa. Um, talk to me about that t- conversation with Taylor and how that may have kind of opened your up your eyes to to where maybe these two tours could one day reunite. Yeah, I mean, you know, Petey and I like we just we like watching golf in general. Like we don't watch a ton, but with one of our buddies, the contention which ends up happening quite a bit. Like we watch it, we don't care what tour he plays on. Like yep. we're cheering for a friend or whatever. Um, when this, you know, the new tour came about, obviously there's questions from everybody. No matter even guys that signed up for the tour, they didn't really know what was going to go down. And for a product that really was probably you know off the rails a little bit from the start, like not knowing what was happening. They played in a, in, a, in a different country, not the United States. Guys going over, playing for all this money. You know, wasn't just streaming on YouTube. They've really grown brand recognition because the quality of players they've gotten are pretty pretty good. Yeah. You know, and everybody's like, oh, this guy's career's washed, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, they had three out of the top five guys at the Masters or whatever. And that doesn't mean that, you know, people are pro live, pro PJ Tour, plenty are. But I think people just want to watch good golf. Like, I love watching the PJ Tour. I know those courses. Like, you know, play those courses, 
majority of the guys that, that I'm buddies with play out there. I'm like, heck yeah, I'm going to watch it. But if one of my buddies is playing on live or whatever, and he's, and he has a chance to play well, I'm going to, I'm going to watch him. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think the major specifically, really, if I were, if I were them and a lot of people, you want the best players in your tournament, like the two tours, that's one thing they're rival tours, but like the majors, they're their own, you know, entity. True, they're, not, yeah. they're, they're affiliated, but they're not, you know, run governed by them. So they can kind of do whatever they want. Um, you know, if the masters didn't have Bill or Kepka playing, that would have been a totally different tournament, right? It still would have been enjoyable. It's the masters. Who's not going to watch that, but <laughs> obviously we want Kepka watching Kepka and the majors excited, exciting. Um, John Rom, you know, that dude is playing, playing unbelievable. So for sure, no one's disappointed Rom one. I'm thrilled. I'm a Callaway golf guy. I love watching John Rom play, but having that live plus PGA tour kind of rivalry in the last group was pretty cool to follow as well. Yeah. Um, I think Taylor's kind of points were like, you know, figure it out. There's enough good guys on both where at least the biggest tournaments of the year, you know, we get to see as golf fans, we get to see the best guys compete against each other because it's not just a bunch of old dudes on live. Like, I mean, Joaquin Neiman, I don't know what his ranking is now because they're slipping because they don't have points. Right. The dude was like 12th when he went there and he was only 20 years old. So there's plenty of young talent where you can, you know, we'd like to see a couple of those guys, but um, yeah, man, I don't know. It's not, it's not uh, way above my pay grade for sure. But as the golf fan, I'm sure like watching all those guys compete against each other. Definitely. And Taylor had interesting suggestions of, you know, a foursome of PGA tour players playing as a team at one live event, or maybe the top 10 sure. live guys playing in a special tour event. And I think that's how you maybe break the ice. We're, we're starting to see how epic the majors could be and can be when both these tours are, are firing on all cylinders. And we saw that firsthand at Augusta. So uh, cheers to, to more of that in the future with the two tours. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think any, anytime you guarantee money and guarantee big money and purses, it's easier to swing a new idea toward guys. Oh yeah. That's right. Um, it, it just it just happens. So like, <laughs> no matter what it is, I mean, if, if if there is some sort of you know affiliation or or co branding or co sync, whatever it is down the line, yeah, if if guys are on the fence, well, if you're playing for X guaranteed on a team a couple of weeks a year. Well, that's easier to get the big guys to agree to that. I would guess. Amazing how money talks, right? Isn't that fast? I mean, <laughs> especially in a sport where we're growing up, knowing that there's a cut and you got to play really hard. Yep. And, you know, live or die in every shot. It's a different mentality showing up showing up knowing where the, when there's some cash like it it's it's a different deal for sure yeah, it's really cool to see the two of you analyze these current topics in the game and have the guests on that you do. And uh, one thing I wanted to ask about um, regarding PD, I know you're playing status and what you're up to, and we'll see you in the Byron Nelson. And, uh, you're still pretty actively competing. But what, what's PD's playing status? I know there's been some talk about that on recent episodes. Where, where's his game and, 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 and thoughts are in terms of competitive golf right now for him? <laughs> well, apparently he's an amateur again. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what's going on. PD's freaking good. Like he, he, all he does is talk about how much golf he does not play and how bad he is. Mm, he's but that guy. He Got really, it. Yeah. If he really is an amateur, he'll probably win the U.S. amateur, and there will be straight anarchy all over the uh, Twitter sphere and uh, golf social media and things like that because he can probably not play for a while, show up and win something like that. Mm, fascinating. I'll be curious well, to see like, how yeah, that all plays I mean, out. I'm a, I, yeah, I'm full club pro, so like when I get to an event like this, like I really haven't even had a good range session other than the net in my backyard. So I mean the the you know, Twin Warriors golf course here. Um, both golf courses are obviously great, but, you know, they spoil us. It's like we're at a PGA Tour event. Whatever ball you play, they got them in the bags for us to practice on the range. And we're at elevation, so it takes a little getting used to for some guys. I, I play in Lubbock, so the elevation's, you know, over 3,000. But there's some guys coming from, you know, Florida, wherever. You get up to close to 6,000 feet, and all of a sudden, it makes a difference, man. So I feel like I get an advantage this week just adjusting to the elevation and things like that. But... What a setup. Really looking forward to it. They, it's, it just feels exactly like a PJ Tour event this week. It does, man. Really well said indeed. Uh, looking forward to seeing all the action uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, let's talk a little this or that. JJ Colleen here, West Texas Driving Range Pro on Twitter. JJ Colleen TCU is where you want to find him. Uh, real quick, this or that questions for you, JJ. Uh, let's start with the food on the course. Uh, hot dog or protein bar at the turn? Yeah, that's a, that's a, a hot dog. It's not even a what really not a question. It's usually Miller Lite if that was an option, but protein bar is like, that would take a lot for me. Like my wife's had meat for me this week, so that it would take that for me to eat a protein bar. Like mm, I, I was going to I was gonna ask, snack. yeah, what it would take to get you to yeah. eat the protein bar. <laughs> Probably Nothing not. against protein bars. I've eaten plenty. I just, I just, it's never even on my mind when I'm playing golf to eat one. 
And this week in the ter- in a tournament, would you rather make an ace or an albatross in a tournament? Uh, oh, I mean, albatross, one less, one less score on my scorecard, man. There you go. That's, that, that's a mathematician right there. Trump you. I'm going to, I'm going to make an albatross on a par four, which is also a hole in one. So boom, roasted on that one. Wow. I just made myself a hole in one albatross. That's the double answer. You are getting one extra point. I'm I mean, writing that down right now. That's, that's it. I like it. Uh, sunrise golf or sunset. Uh, do sweet nation for me, man. Although I enjoy a late, like where I live, it gets so dark you know, pretty late, maybe 9.45, almost 10 o'clock. I do enjoy that going out there with my kids or whatever every now and again, but nothing better than being first off and nobody's in front of you. My ADD catches up to me at some point when I'm waiting on someone. So with only if you're only running into the guys mowing greens, that's pretty good stuff. Okay. Uh, uh, for 18 holes, how would you shoot a lower score, either playing 18 holes lefty or 18 holes righty, but just with one hand? Uh. Probably, probably lefty. Like I play, I, I play lefty a little bit. My index is like a 17 point something. So I can break 90 if I play well. I threw it. I did that deal a couple of years ago where I bet all those guys I can throw and I threw it for an 83 from the four tees. So wow. I don't know, man, maybe my right-handed swing is okay. But yeah, my lefty, my lefty game is, it's not great, but if I'm playing a forward tee. I can bust 90. How's your shoulder feeling after you threw the 83? Not bad, man. I think I qualified for like the Valero Texas Open the next week. I was just skipping it. I, I figured it out. Oh. You got to play the run game. It's not an overhand move. Chess, not checkers. That's what we're working on here. See, that's I was thinking up top, and you're just playing the British Open runner. Wow. Okay. Yeah, see, that's what that's how I fleeced all those people in bets. They think my arm's going to fall off, but all I'm doing is flying at 50 yards and it's right another 80. <laughs> Love it. And we always wrap with our 19th hole question. So JJ, this one's simple for you. You already answered half of it, but when you get into the clubhouse after a great round, what's your go-to order, your your favorite meal and drink at your clubhouse? Uh, meal? I don't know. Like if we're at a place with good tacos, like I grew up in Southern California, I'm a, ta- I'm a, like a street taco guy, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm game for whatever. Like I'm a, we, I have crap, me and my neighbor brew craft beers, things like that. Just some sort of good beer on the course, usually a Miller Lite situation, something like that. But um, some some good craft beer, I would say. Nice. What are you brewing these days? What kind of beers are you making? Uh, a bunch of stuff that tastes terrible. We've struck out about 12 times in a row. But mm. um, now, uh, lager, a couple lagers. Uh, it's tough, man. You got to have patience and you got to do like – you got to do like 10 at once with different recipes just because you're going to screw it up. So it's like, you don't want to put all your, all your eggs in one basket type deal. You got to switch it up and then you'll probably figure it out. But if I I'll, I'll send you some, if I ever have one that's worth sending someone. So it sounds like we'll, we'll perfect red feather golf club first, and then we'll perfect the yeah. craft brewing. How's that sound? For, for sure. Yeah. We got a red feather vodka coming out. It's called rooster juice. It's a lemon based vodka. So that's coming out uh, probably here in the next couple months. So that'll be a good one. So I'm going to have to switch to that. Love it. He's the West Texas Driving Range Pro. He's in the field with Byron Nelson. JJ, thanks so much for hopping on the Course of Life, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, looking forward to this week. That chat with the West Texas Driving Range Pro, JJ Colleen, was brought to you by our friends at Swing Juice. And Mike, it's no secret, you've seen me on the road a lot. And I've been enjoying rocking the Swing Juice golf and hip-hop hoodie. Super comfy if you're doing any traveling, by the way. Just thought I should mention that. Yeah, I mean, I I got one of their hoodies as well, and it is super soft and comfy. And of everything that I got, the wife gives full approval. So, you know, wife approval is very important in what you wear. Happy wife, happy life it is. Check out swingjuice.com, promo code LIFE20 to save anything on their store. Anything you can buy at swingjuice.com gets 20% off, promo code LIFE20. Use it today. And we're back. Great chat there with JJ. Nothing worse, I feel like, than, you know, first team mulligan, really. It happens to all of us. But to go from first team mulligan to to, to punching your ticket 
to Oak Hill to play in the PGA Championship. That's that's incredible. Yep, that's my favorite after fact here uh, of JJ Colleen's week. Um, he was a great guest and loved everything he has to offer in the For the People podcast. Definitely a podcast friend of ours. Check them out. But he started the week with the provisional, Mike. I diagrammed it and diatribed it on Instagram at COL Podcast and Course Life Alex. Uh, so nothing like starting with the provisional, ending with a ch- ticket to Oak Hill. So again, JJ, you're going to see him in the Byron Nelson field this week, and you're also going to see him in the PGA Championship this week. So uh, two weeks to uh, get it going. This could this could be a big moment for JJ's career. So excited to see uh, what he does in the next couple of weeks here. So will you put a dollar on JJ to make the cut? Mm, that, if, if I can find those odds, I will take them. I like mm. that. Maybe about, maybe, about, eh, maybe about 40, 50 to one to make the cut. Something yeah. like that. I'll take those odds. Sure thing. Why not? Why not? And hey, if you like that chat with JJ Plus with Derek earlier, make sure to uh, punch that subscribe button on the podcast app you're using right now. Give us a rating, four stars, five stars, thumbs up, uh, whatever is the appropriate Anything. positive Any interaction is good interaction these days, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm constantly searching for positive reinforcement in the work we do, and Alex doesn't really provide it to me. So only you, dear listener, can do that. So please. Go ahead and give that a try. You can also follow us on Instagram, COL Podcast, Course of Life Alex, M-W-R-I-N-C. We're on Twitter. It continues to burn to the ground, but we're there, Course of Life 1 and M-W-R-I-N-C. And we're on YouTube, too, so you can listen to the podcast. We got some video interviews as well from when Alex was at the PGA show in Orlando in January, so you can check that out. We're on all those other podcast apps. And check out Always End With Food on Instagram as well to see pictures Mm. of our food content. Some pretty cool stuff going on there as well. Speaking of Always Ending With Food, let's hashtag Always End With Food. Yeah, let's do that. And by the time people listen to this, they're going to see a post of my recap of the food I ate in Vegas, which is always a treat. Now, the thing I said I was going to do, I set out and I did, Mike. You know, I've been to Vegas a few times and it's very easy when you go to Vegas to just walk and wander without a plan and just let it take you away. Now, that's fun. But once you go a few times... You kind of want to do it a little bit more calculated. So that's what I did. So I looked up different monorail stops and food and beverage spots uh, near there within walking distance. I think I crushed my trip. I don't know what you saw, but it it was a pretty successful uh, foodie vacation in Las Vegas. I didn't see any pictures from from Hell's Kitchen, though. You said you were going to Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. Where was no where plans was that? changed? Indeed, uh, so I had to snub Gordon Ramsay. I'm sure he's still standing there with a, that stewing mm. look on his face, um, missing our table of six. Uh, so it wasn't meant to be. But I will tell you, the best meal that I did have was right yeah. at the bottom floor. I'm shouting out Sid's Cafe at the Westgate because Mike half pound beef burger with truffle fries on the side. I have not had a better burger in a long time. I don't know what it was. There was nothing really life-changing about it. It was your classic overpriced $20 burger. Um, Truffle fries were absolutely amazing and hit the spot. So shout out Sid's if you're looking for a good burger. I think that might be Sleepy, your, your best spot a little bit off the strip as well. Okay, okay. And I'm sure you had plenty of dessert and sweet items while you were there as well. Yeah, oh, yes, definitely. Um, I, there were a few that I didn't get to, uh, but I'll shout out a couple of the, the nice ones. The, the good deal, you'll appreciate, Mike. Five cookies for seven bucks on the Vegas Strip. How about that? You know, that's, that's pretty good. Not where to go. Yeah, exactly. That's good we'll t- we'll, so shout out Honolulu Cookie. Um, and they, they do a great job. They're right in the link. Uh, Harrah's Promenade there. If you want good, cheap cookies for the end of the night, enjoy those very much so. But the gelato. The gelato at Le Macaron inside the Venetian Mike. You, you get the gelato. I got half bubble gum, half mint chimp, and then you walk upstairs, and there's a little private area where you can sit down where no one else knows to go, and you sit right over the gondolas as they go right under you into the Venetian River. So very cool spot there. So definitely the gelato, I'd say, uh, was the number one dessert of the trip. You know, you got me going on gelato, and then you said bubble gum and mint chip and individually I wouldn't have them. And then you put them together and you made me almost dry heave a little in my chair. (laughs) So (laughs) they are two flavors that admittedly do not go together, but I wanted them so desperately, (laughs) desperately. I had just tried a different gelato place. and wanted to compare the mint chip and I'm a sucker for bubble gum because it's my favorite ice cream flavor. And I'd never seen bubble gum and gelato in my life. So that the moment Mm. called, yes. That was that was the recap. So I'm I'm sure you paid a lot of money for your food in Vegas. Oh, 
Oh yes, like I said, Vegas prices twenty dollar burgers, uh, yeah. six six dollar uh, seven dollar Starbucks. Uh, let's see, um, yeah, eight dollar sides of anything, uh, yeah. ten dollar beers. Good prices, right? I, I mean, I I was aghast this week because on Monday we we went out and we ended up going to Five Guys, real healthy, real great for the diet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also but, a good burger. Um, we got. I got like a little bacon cheeseburger and she got a little burger and we got two little fries and we got two drinks with tax. Okay. Thirty eight dollars at five That's guys. A lot. Yeah. You know, wow. fast food, two two burgers, two fries, two sodas. You love it to be under twenty. You can deal with it if it's in the twenties and it's good. But when yeah. we get when we get over thirty dollars for two burgers, two fries, two sodas, at a chain. At a chain. <laughs> that's yeah. That's that's the line. I think. I think thirty yeah. is the number for me. So thirty eight, huh? Damn. Yeah. And well, and, and, and of course, on their lobster tail. Jesus. I don't know. And we had this conversation a while ago about tipping and how tipping has gone out of control. Right. I yeah. don't tip it. You know, Five Guys now has the audacity to ask you when you check out. Do you want to leave a tip? And I'm sorry, five guys. I love the service industry. I work in food service, as you know. I work in a bakery. I think tipping is an important part of small business. But five guys, you're just making my food already. You don't need to get tips. I'm yeah, sorry. That's no. That uh, that again is where we draw the line. So uh, fair enough. God, that's a that's a troubling experience if the burger prices are going up that way. Yeah, God. crazy. Well, uh, that's Always End With Food. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to Always End With Food and this episode of Course of Life. Uh, appreciate the subscribe or the like wherever you can do it, and we'll see you next week.